one of the things that comes up frequently in my conversations with artists is the concept of warming up. Drawing is a skill just like basketball or playing the guitar. Um, you wouldn't ask Kobe Bryant or Joe Satriani to give their peak performances if they haven't even touched uh, their basketball or guitar today, much less if they haven't touched it in several days. So what I want to show you first is how I tend to warm up. So as you can see, the first thing I do is I start with straight lines. Um, first, I try to snap a straight line that's a comfortable length, two to three inches, and then go over it several times. You can see here where I'm not warmed up and I'm missing uh, the mark. And then uh, I go over it several times until I'm doing better. Each one of these lines I tend to go over six to eight times and then I try to get them longer and longer each time. You can see that one's not such a good one there. Um, the longer you get, the harder it is. And I find it even more difficult to do on my Wacom Cintiq uh, because it's kind of a glassy surface. Next we have curves. You can see I start off with a short two inch curve. Uh, at this point I'm bending at the wrist then as you get into bigger curves, you want to start to lock your wrist and start to bend at the elbow. Again, I'm going over these like eight times, trying to hit the mark, uh, and just maintain control. Okay, If you can make a line that looks like it's the same line, then you have a fairly decent control. You can see, again, I missed the mark there. Now I'm starting to lock my wrist and work from the elbow to make these bigger arcs, and that really helps you go uh, a lot farther on the page. Curves and lines are the foundation for everything that you're going to draw, so that's why it's important to start there when doing your warm-ups. All right, now let's move on to a different type of curve, the S-curve. Now, in this curve, it is a little bit more tricky. Um, you have to try and match two different directions of curves. And as you can see here, I'm doing it six times. Um, <clears throat> And it's harder, for sure. Now I'm going to go a different direction and challenge myself again, which you can see I'm not matching these lines nearly as well as I did with the straight lines. So it definitely takes practice. But notice here, um, I'm going to pull these S-curves straight from top to bottom. And pulling down from the page definitely helps a little bit. All right, next up we have circles. Circles are here to help get your arm moving. I'm going to start off making these circles with the goal being to make a circle in one stroke and have it end where you begin. It's not about making a perfect circle, not yet. Uh, just making it in one stroke instead of the little hatchy, sketchy lines. Now up here, I'm trying to practice a little bit more by making my circles fit between two points, uh, just eyeballing it. Uh, this is another great way to practice your line control and, and making a mark exactly where you want to make it. And now I'm going to make circles that are much bigger and looser. I'm using my elbow and my shoulder to make these very quick, smooth circles. So now that I'm warmed up, I can start thinking about a warm-up sketch. One of the great things about doing warm-ups is it's going to get your muscle memory going to making quick, smooth lines, and this will keep you from jumping right into the details. So a lot of times I'm not sure you know, where to begin my first sketch, so I'll generally just sort of feel my way through it, but at least at this point I'm being loose because of the warm-ups. So now what I want to do is, keeping my lines loose, I want to start to block in the character. Um, so I'm focusing in on uh, the proportions. You can see I've drawn a shoulder line and then a chest line that's one head length down. And then I have a hip line starting to form. I'm starting to try to block in some of the arms, making sure the proportions are right. And, and still trying to just keep things loose, so if I need to change them, I can. One of the things to watch for as I'm sketching this you know, foundation out and starting to get the character down is how I will alternate between straight lines and curved lines. Um, you know, we always think of uh, 
characters as being you know mostly made of curves but i found it's more aesthetically pleasing to balance between some curves and some straight lines so i like to push that extreme uh, as as often as i can all right now that i've sketched a little bit i'm starting to get a, a clearer vision in my mind of you know what this sketch might might be so i'm going to start wrapping up here with some some legs, just throw in something loose as a placeholder um, so I can kind of go on to the second stage of this sketch. Right? This is stage one though, just getting a base. So even though I'm changing the direction of the head, um, I, I have a foundational shape, a form that you can look at and say, hey, I can tell that that is a woman laying on the ground propped up on her hands. And that is the first level of a sketch that you need to get down clearly because when people glance at something they look at the form first before they get into the details um, it's also the last thing that you'll forget uh, when it comes to remembering people you'll forget the color of their eyes uh, long before you forget their shape you'll recognize them from down the hall quite easily so now that I have a strong form. I'm going to start in on those secondary details like the face and uh, some of the features that make this figure an individual rather than just a generic form. So now I'm going to start working on the eyes, the features of the face, uh, some very surprised eyes because I'm not sure what I'm going to have over there on the other side, but I'm certain I want to have her surprised here. And then start to put in some of the features that, that make her face get in some of the hairline here. Um, and then one of the things that I like to do when I'm sketching uh, is to kind of just um, give some contrast to a sketch by just quickly sketching in or, or shading in uh, where the dark areas are going to be. Uh, it's not really about... Um, creating shadow and light or anything like that. It's just about saying this is a dark area, this is a light area, um, to really start to uh, see where things are going to have the high contrast. Um, I always enjoy drawing dark-headed characters more uh, because they always have so much contrast around their face that draws your eye right to them very easily. Whereas with blonde characters, um, you have to get a little bit more creative. So now I'm again starting to block in some of the uh, other details that make this character who it is. We'll see if you can figure out which character I'm drawing. This portion of, of the drawing usually is a dead giveaway. Alright, hopefully by now you can figure out I'm sketching Wonder Woman. Um, I'm trying to do a Wonder Woman in like Savage Land. So um, I'm trying to make her costume a little bit more roughed up. Um, so I want to break, break the contour where it's smooth with some of the rough features. Um, now again, I know that you know these areas are going to be mostly dark. Uh, yes, they'll have spots that I don't fill in pure black, but they will be dark uh, with color or something. Uh, so I want to go ahead and fill them in and see what that looks like now. All right, so now I'm going to use a tool from Photoshop called Warp to try and just move a small chunk around. This is an advantage uh, that comes with Photoshop. It's a tool, but it's not really um, a cheat. Basically, I guess it could be considered a cheat. Basically, if I wanted to fix that head, I would just need to, in real paper, erase it and draw it again. Uh, whereas this allowed me to just go in there and make a quick adjustment and keep moving. Uh, it's one of the things I like about sketching digitally because do I know how to erase it and fix it? Yes, but this speeds up production. All right, now I can also see that there is a... Um, a rather elongated part of her uh, upper chest and head. So I'm going to be using another Photoshop tool here in a second called the Liquify tool uh, to help work that out. 
So now again, I'm working on those details that make this character who she is by defining some of the muscles a bit more, uh, more than you would for the average female drawing. We want to see some of those muscles. All right, so now I'm just kind of going through and bolding the outlines, adding in a few details. Um, I'll, you'll see me go over the outline of the character several times because I really want to have that have a high contrast, easy read as well. Um, so I'm just working on the forms, sketching and erasing here and there, trying to get things uh, to where it looks looks nice. Okay. So now I'm going to start to focus on more of a composition rather than just a sketch. And you can see now I'm fixing that, uh, that elongated head and kind of pushing and pulling things around that feel just a little bit off. Um, this is another huge advantage of, of Photoshop using the liquify tool, but you really have to know how to use the tool and also know where the problem in your form is before you start using it. Otherwise, you can make things look really bad. So as you can see, I made a new layer. And now what I want to start focusing on is uh, what kind of background I want to have. Um, I knew I wanted to put her on some sort of tree because she's in the jungle. Um, so I'm sort of starting to work on the contours, which how is the shape and form of this tree. So you can see I'm sketching really lightly to try and figure that out. So here we go, starting to put in some some different lines going different directions to represent the gnarled shape of the uh, tree. So now what I'm going to do is I have my uh, marquee tool set at a ratio for a double page spread for a comic. And now I'm changing it to a single page spread and outlining it so that I quickly know uh, where the edge of the comic is and where the center of the comic is. And so uh, I'll sketch in a title real quick. And now I kind of know what the composition of this is on the page. Um, my tactic a lot of times is just to sketch first and then crop to composition later. I find this especially useful in comics when working on panels because sometimes, you know, when you're confined inside a panel, it can feel uh, very claustrophobic. So if you just draw the thing you want to put into it and then scale it to fit inside a panel, it often helps. So now I figured out that I want to put uh, some sort of big creature back here in this big empty space. So being that it's Savage Land, I'm probably going to go with a dinosaur head. But notice that I, again, start with a basic shape of circle. And then I start to add the, the protruding parts and build around that circle. You always want to think about the forms that make up a thing, the shapes and the forms that make up objects, because simple shapes make up everything. So as you can see, I have the the basic shape uh, of the the. Uh, dinosaur here. So now I'm starting to sort of work out some secondary details. I'm certain I will change this completely by the time if I do a final sketch of this, but it gets me there uh, and gets me the idea across. So now I have a nice flow on the page. Um, I have uh, what she's looking at and what's looking at her. So there's a nice dynamic there. She's nicely centered on the cover uh, and when you open it up to the full page, uh, we have a nice composition there as well. So um, I'm pretty pleased with this. And now I'll go and probably do uh, three or four more of these before I pick one and then start uh, the secondary process, which is penciling. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that video and hope you got something out of it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. And um, again, thank you to all the patrons who support me on Patreon. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. And if you'd like to become a member of Patreon, please consider it. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help get these videos out, as well as help get my comic series Mythica coming out on a more regular basis. Uh, to check that 
out. It's www.patreon.com forward slash Action Studios. Uh, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.